Hi, it's really nice to be here. Um, my name's Linda Batterby and I work for the National Food Bank charity, the Trussell Trust. Um, and um, we run, amongst other things, um, a network of um, over 400 food banks around the UK. And I'm here today uh, to tell you a little bit about how those food banks work, but also to look at um, some of the different things that food banks can inspire um, in the community connected to food. Um, one of the things that we're finding is that more and more people are falling into food poverty. Um, we work with people who are um, on benefits, people who are elderly, um, and 20% of people coming to food banks have a job. Uh, lots and lots of people now reporting that they feel like they're just one paycheck away from a crisis. Many, many people who weren't falling into poverty before are finding themselves now visiting food banks. Um, we, um, last year, and just before I launch into sort of how food banks work, um, in the financial year 2012 to 13, um, we fed across our food banks around the UK uh, 349,000 people. And I think Tom uh, quoted the figure of half a million people accessing food banks um, across the UK. That figure includes uh, independent food banks not part of our network. So you can see that last year was a really tricky time for people. In the first six months of this year, our food banks have fed 355,000 people already. So we've already fed more people in the first six months of this financial year than we did for the whole of last year. So things are getting worse and we're launching two to three food banks each week. Uh, people coming for two main reasons. Um, one is to do with benefit related issues. Uh, benefit delays, benefit changes, um, and the other for those who um, are on a low income, perhaps surviving on 11, 12, 13,000 pounds a year, and then the boiler breaks or an unexpected bill arrives through the post and suddenly they can't afford to pay the bills and to eat as well. One of the things that we notice is that in people's budgets, food is one of the few flexible items. Uh, so people will sacrifice food uh, just in order to pay the bills. Uh, and as we ride into winter, one of the really difficult decisions that people are making is between heating and eating. Uh, here in the northwest, uh, last year 39,168 people f uh, were fed um, and already to date this financial year 80,000 people were fed across 41 food banks in, uh, in the northwest um, and so far this year in Lancashire 7,000 people uh, have used one of our food banks. Uh, so how do food banks work? Most of you will probably have heard something of um, our work just through uh, various media reports. Um, but because we're at um, a conference that is all about food, I just want to pause on, uh, on the kind of how we get food and, and what the food that we give is. It's really important to us as the Trussell Trust that food um, is, uh, comes into food banks from the local community. 90% of food uh, given to food banks is given through public donations and the rest is made up from uh, donations from businesses and other organisations. We collect non-perishable food and I know that there will be lots and lots of nutrition students out here who will slightly take a bit of an intake of breath um, at the fact that we do um, only accept uh, non-perishable food, so food in tins and packets. Uh, but I just wanted to reassure you really that um, we have been working with um, a, a nutrition uh, team from a primary care trust in Salisbury uh, where our head office is based uh, for many years now. Uh, we approached them when we very first started doing food banks 13 years ago and they helped us to assemble a package of three days worth of nutritionally balanced food uh, for our food banks made up of non-perishable food items. Uh, they've just revised that list again um, in May of this year and we're continuing to work with one or two other organisations just to check uh, that the food that we're giving out is healthy. Uh, so uh, clients receive three days worth of food um, at any one time um, and they receive everything on this list in different quantities depending on the family size. They're also um, offered menu guides so they know exactly what to do with the food um, and their food, the, the food they're given makes up three meals a day for three days and breakfast on the fourth day. So there is very little waste um, and people know exactly what to do with it. Uh, we also collect things like um, extra items, um, anything that's um, tins, packets, um, treat items. Um, at Christmas we collect uh, mince pies and Christmas puddings and so on and so forth. Um, and toiletries as well. We're starting to see now lots of people who um, are coming to food banks who 
are really struggling to access toiletries. So we had one woman at a food bank in the northwest who came um, a couple of weeks ago who hadn't had any toilet roll for two weeks. Uh, so the situation is really difficult for people out there. What I would say is that we're working with people in crisis um, and when they come to us they've often not eaten anything for four or five days and our primary focus is getting something into them uh, that's going to be quick and easy to produce using very little in the way of cooking equipment. That's one of the really big issues facing people today. We're having to, as we go into the Christmas season, we're having to check that people have microwaves uh, if they're given Christmas puddings because the steamer microwave uses so much gas and electricity uh, for people um, that it's just too expensive to cook. So these are kind of the issues facing many people in our country today. Uh, we actually had um, a, a family who came to a food bank again in the northwest some months ago who were attempting to boil water over a radiator uh, because they had so little cooking equipment. So uh, we're not just talking about people who need a little bit of extra food. Uh, things are really, really difficult. We don't collect non-perishable food, but what food banks do sometimes do is connect with organisations who give out fresh food, um, and those organisations will come to the food bank, stand uh, in the food bank while the uh, clients are there, and they will offer fresh fruit and veg, uh, which they will take away again. It's very difficult uh, for many food banks to comply with uh, regulations around storing um, and keeping fresh fruit and veg, um, and so they do need to find other ways to do that if they want to give it out. Uh, food banks um, are accessed by referral only, so you can't just turn up at a food bank. Uh, frontline care professionals identify people who need food um, and they give somebody a voucher and that entitles that person and their family uh, to three days worth of food. Our guidance is that agencies uh, should only give three vouchers um, to any family uh, within a six month period and then if somebody needs more food than that, um, they can contact the food bank um, and um, have a discussion about that um, and the agency may be able to refer that person and more. Um, so for people who have an ongoing crisis, they can access the food a little bit longer. But the idea is not uh, that we will be feeding people this food for a very long period of time. Uh, they will be. It's a, a, a crisis point uh, whilst the referral agencies work uh, to resolve the, uh, the factors that have caused their, cri uh, their crisis in the first place. And then clients take their vouchers and they pick the food up at the food bank centre where they're met by volunteers who offer time, uh, they listen to them, um, they um, hear their um, story about what they've been going through and with that information they then look to signpost people back out into the community. So although referral organisations are doing that as well, uh, food banks are trained to signpost just to make sure that people are doing, having the most information that they possibly can in order to avoid their crisis. One of the things that our food banks are really about is being more than just food. So that signposting element is really crucial to food banks. A food bank that doesn't signpost people back out into the community, not only to formal organisations, but also to uh, services that offer um, uh, activities that improve social cohesion, such as lunch clubs, breakfast clubs, parent and toddler groups, um, is a weaker food bank. As food banks grow and develop, they will often um, run, um, invite um, people like housing organisations and advocacy groups uh, to come in and run informal surgeries um, so that those organisations can have direct access uh, with the people coming into food banks. Um, as I mentioned, food banks will also give extras such as baby feed, feminine hygiene products, nappies, uh, toiletries, etc. And we also, um, from time to time, have food banks running other activities, um, including Eat Well, Spend Less, which I'm going to touch on in a second, um, and volunteering opportunities. For many people, they find that food banks um, are um, a kind of community-run um, operation where people of all walks of life uh, find a real home there. Eat Well, Spend Less is a course that we um, are in the process of piloting actually with the um, Children's Food Trust. Um, uh, we're starting piloting this in the Midlands and the North East. Um, and this is a course designed to improve budgetary, hygiene, shopping and cooking skills. And the idea is that we will work with uh, partners around the UK um, to deliver this, uh, this course using a train the trainer approach, working with food banks um, to help them um, identify clients who might be ready um, and able and have the time uh, to be able to improve their skills in these areas. One of the things that we find is that some clients will come to a food bank once 
um, and then never need our service again, which is fantastic. And so connecting them to these kinds of courses can be a challenge. Um, but for those who come back um, a little bit more regularly or keep in touch with the food bank through volunteering, uh, this kind of course will um, help to prevent them uh, falling into crisis again um, and also enable them to eat um, more healthily um, on a budget. Um, if you are interested in supporting this particular project, it's not something that I'm directly involved in, um, but um, if you come and see me, I can give you my card and I can link you up with um, my colleague in the Trussell Trust who is um, involved in piloting this course. I've raised through that because I just wanted to pause um, on um, uh, kind of the title of this talk, which was about um, what more can food banks do? Um, and I will just cover this really briefly. Um, but um, one of the things that we've noticed is that food banks um, aren't there to do everything, but they can identify trends and gaps. So part of the package that we provide um, food banks with um, is an online data collection system which enables them to record who's giving food, the amount of food that they're being given, uh, but also, really crucially, who's accessing the food bank, how many times they're accessing it, where those people are coming from, the specific wards that people um, are coming from, and why they're accessing the food bank. And so that allows food banks to identify trends and gaps which they can report um, to councillors. Um, as a national charity, um, at least once, usually twice a year, we release um, those statistics nationally uh, to the government and uh, the national media so that people have um, an understanding of why people are falling into food poverty in the hope that that will inspire other initiatives. So one of the things that um, food banks tend to notice is, for example, that they see an increase in the numbers of families with children accessing food banks during school holidays. So we've heard today a lot about the importance of free school meals. Um, when that goes away, when breakfast clubs stop happening, um, the school holidays become a real difficult time for people. Um, and we see people who are um, on the breadline to such an extent that that free school meal is the thing that is stopping them from going uh, into food poverty. And so food banks have to step up during school holidays. What we would love to see are more initiatives um, in those school holidays providing meals for um, those pupils. Um, some food banks see clients who lack cooking equipment and um, people who um, can't afford to use their oven or don't even have an oven, um, perhaps because of um, cost, uh, gas and electric prices. Um, we see people who... Um, have perhaps one pan, um, one knife, if that. Um, there's a real um, explosion now in some organisations looking at um, yoghurt pot cookery, uh, where people learn to make recipes just using a yoghurt pot because they've got no scales. Uh, we see people um, needing um, to know how to um, cook using a microwave or slow cookers, uh, doing healthy meals in those um, uh, pieces of equipment because... Um, uh, because it's so much cheaper. Um, and we also see people who um, are desperately wanting to cook healthily, and it's not sometimes due to a lack of knowledge, but due to a lack of, um, a lack of money. So they can't afford to buy basic ingredients like um, salt and pepper and oil and basic larder ingredients that are preventing people uh, from being able to cook healthily for their families. Um, so these are the kinds of things that food banks are seeing um, and are able to pass on to councillors, to um, community organisations and to the media um, in the hope that other people will step into those gaps um, and be able to play their part. Um, it is really, really important um, that we um, recognise that food banks cannot and shouldn't do everything. There was lots and lots of organisations that we've heard from today um, who are doing some great work and they're doing that work well because they're focusing on one particular thing. Um, and we really want our food banks not to be distracted by doing millions of different projects, but rather to be a catalyst for change um, for, for the rest of the community. Um, Food banks are making a huge difference. Uh, we are seeing people all over the country who just need a very simple amount of food to get them through a crisis. Um, and it's that food which is uh, preventing malnutrition um, and hunger. Many people who um, are um, able to feed their kids because they are accessing food banks and we cannot put a price on that. We don't want to see food banks um, in this country. We would like to see a reduction in the number of food banks, uh, but we refuse to close food banks down just to make a point. Uh, we don't want to use the most vulnerable people in our community um, to, um, to demonstrate that we've got problems in society. Um, so we do aim to use our statistics um, and um, opportunities like this just to raise awareness 
awareness of what's really going on in this country. And we hope that organisations and events like this will inspire uh, collective change uh, through food in local communities. So I know I've raced through that at breakneck speed. Um, I had a sign waved at me to say that I had one minute left about two minutes ago. So um, I will um, leave now. But um, do come and see me if you'd like any leaflets um, or you'd like to take my card um, and we can have a chat um, a little bit later on. Thanks for having me.